So this is Phys 2320 Computing 2 and this is the first uh, unit on the video tutorials all about functions. So if you're a University of Leeds student registered on this module then you will be able to download the Jupyter Notebook that these slides are generated from as well as a PDF version uh, from the Minerva module. So mainly what we're going to be doing here is um, revising and starting to extend your knowledge about functions uh, from the Computing 1 course. So in particular we're going to start with just simply revising um, what a function is. So in, in computer programming we're often trying to um, break up a problem, a big long problem, into smaller sections of code that we can work on individually um, and functions are a key part of this. So a function is simply a bit of code that takes some data, its parameters, does something um, and possibly returns some answers uh, back to the code that was trying to use it. So um, the code that you've got in the function, that, that block of code is given the name, so that's the name of the function, and function names in Python follow the same rules as other names uh, such as variables are using. So let's start with an example then. So here we have a function that is called this is a function. Um, the, you know it's a function because it has a, a def line. Um, it doesn't take any inputs, um, so there are no parameters, and we know that because there's nothing written between the open and close brackets on the def line. And then the final character on the def line, the colon, is telling Python to expect the next lines of code to be indented um, as part of a block. And that indented block of code is called the body of the function. Um, so in this case, the body of the function has two lines, um, the first of all of which prints a message, um, and the last second line um, returns a value back to the code that's using the function. We also talk about the signature of a function, and by that we mean what's written on the def line. So the signature is the function's name and whether it has any parameters. We'd also probably um, think about the uh, what type of num uh, answer the function returns as being part of its signature. So if you like, a signature is a thing that is um, all the bits of the function that are not the bit of the code that actually does the work in the middle. So um, when you write a function that um, has to work with someone else's code or you use a function that's written from someone else's code it's really important that you understand the signature and you have the correct signature. So that is you supply the information to the function in the correct order that it's expecting and also that you get a, a number back out of the function um, that um, is as it's going to be expected by whatever's using that function. Um, and if you don't get the signature right, if it doesn't take information in correctly or it doesn't produce information the right way, then it's going to break some code. So I'm going to probably end up saying this several times, but it's very, very important that you understand there's a big difference between printing something in a function, i.e. putting something, some information onto the screen for a human to read, and return, or returning something from the function, which means you're passing information back to the code that's, that's using the function. Um, so actually, quite a lot of the time, you're going to be writing functions where there's not necessarily going to be um, a human there to go and read anything you print out, or there may not even be a screen on which you could print things. So um, it's very important that you understand that if you're printing, it's not the same as returning information from the function. So when we say we want the function to return something, we mean you need a return statement that returns the correct values. OK, so that's how to define a function. How do we then use a function? So using a function, we talk about calling it, by which we mean supplying name values for any of its parameters and um, potentially um, collecting the value it returns and assigning it to some variable that we can use somewhere else. So again, to show you an example using the function we just defined, here we are now calling the function um, and we're going to assign the result to the variable xx. So calling the function we're writing its name and then following it with the, the brackets, with the parentheses. Um, in this case because our function doesn't take any um, parameters we don't need to put anything between the parentheses. 
but we do need to have the parentheses there um, in order to make it clear that we're calling the function. Um, and then uh, when we call the function it's going to produce the value um, uh, 3 because that's what it, this function returns so the thing in the return statement um, and then we assign that to the variable xx and then in this example here we're just printing out what the value of xx is. So when we actually run that code then what happens is first of all it prints out to do a calculation and that's coming because of the print line in the definition of this as a function. So if you remember that um, function is defined so that the first line in its body is print um, and that's what it prints. And then um, it will return the value 3, that's assigned to the variable xx and then we print the value of xx um, and that's what you then see it doing. If you don't include the parentheses um, after the function name then you're not calling it. What you're actually doing is you're saying that xx is a synonym for this is a function. Now that is perfectly legal to go and do in Python but it's possibly not what you were expecting to go and do. So here's what happens. So in the first line here we say, say xx equals this as a function. So if you compare that to the previous example where we had the parentheses we were calling the function, here what we're saying is xx is a synonym for this as a function. And we can show that's the case when we now print out and say um, what is xx and what's its id, that's where is this stored in memory. And you can see what it tells you is that xx is a function and its id is the same as the id of this is a function. In other words, what it's telling you is that those are the, the, the code that you're referring to with xx and the code that you're referring to with this is a function are both stored in the same place in the computer's memory, so they're the same code. So in other words, xx is now just a synonym for this is a function. Now that means you can use xx just like this is a function. So you can write yy equals xx brackets, close brackets. And now we are calling the code that we've given the name xx to. And that's the same code that we called this as a function. And you can see it does exactly the same thing. It prints out do a calculation and it tells us that the variable yy, which has been set equal to the return value of xx, which is the same as the return value of this as a function, is 3. So you can just call it um, um, and also um, what you could do is you can call and then not assign a return value to anything. Um, in which case you're just simply discarding the result of the function. Now this again is a thing that can sometimes get a little bit complicated if you're working on in uh, the console in Spider or uh, in a Jupyter Notebook. Um, so here what we've done is we've just called this as a function, brackets brackets, um, uh, to show we're calling it um, and we've not assigned it to any variable. So what happens is the function runs, it prints out do a calculation and then it returns the value 3. But we're not assigning that value 3 to anything. Um, so we're about to go and throw it away. Now what uh, Spider, the, the, the console in Spider or Jupyter does, it says oh hang on we've just got something back from this function, I'll, I'll show it to the user just in case they were interested. Um, so it outputs the value 3, um, but that value is basically lost from your code. Um, so any other lines that follow on after the line we've just shown you there can't make use of that return value. It's, it's gone. Uh, and if you actually run the, the code as a, as a little program, if you write it into the editor of Spider and then tell it to run that code, then it won't display the value 3, it'll just simply lose it. So if you want to get the value from a function, you need to assign it to a variable or print it or do something with it. But you have to actually take some action. If the function just returns and you don't have any way of collecting that information, then you simply lose the return value.